Well, hello. I want to welcome you to another exciting episode of Pens in Use. This week, I will look at the pens I'm using and the inks that I have in them, give you a little bit of information about each one. And hey, do you have a sleeper pen that you want to talk about? I have a sleeper pen that I'm surprised is still in my collection, and yet I have nice things to say about it. So stay tuned for Pens in Use. So, this week, I had some major changes. Somebody pointed out last week that I seemed to have a flex theme going on. I didn't know that, but I did. Uh, a lot of those pens are empty now because they flexed all the ink right out of the... Well, <laughs> most of them were sack filler, so right out of the sack. Uh, this week, the pens I have in use, I have my modern Aurora 88, a pen I would call an aspirational pen, which I have come to love. Uh, next to it, I have an old, a vintage Aurora 88, which is a pen I happen to love and which is the reason the modern one is even in my collection. I have an Aurora Style. I have a Lamy 2000. I have a Senator 140, which I'm pretty sure is the next pen that's going to go empty because that's another flex one and I've been using it for a while. I have a Pilot Custom 823. I have a Centro Pen 10014, which is a interesting pen and I talked more about that last week. And then I have a Wall Eversharp Skyliner 50. As always, I will be writing everything in my Bomo Art Journal, which is a review I will be filming soon. This is a custom notebook made uh, basically by hand in Budapest, Hungary. So look forward to that. Don't know when, but look forward to it. As several alert viewers pointed out last week, I did forget what year it was last week. But I've got the year right this time. So we'll be looking first at the Aurora. Now I just recently filmed a review of this and we took a look at it uh, compared to its vintage ancestor. Just a, an attractive pen, fairly simple. Uh, I happen to like this orange finish a lot. I don't know why, but you know, usually I go for those slim black pens, but yeah, I like the orange. So I went with an orange one when I saw it. All right, this is a pen that has the flex nib in it, which was uh, created as a special edition for Aurora's, uh, what is it, the 70th anniversary, I guess, of this pen? Uh, anyway, I'm excited to see Aurora experimenting with flex. I hope to see more of it. Some people have expressed disappointment in the flex, and yeah, not vintage flex. But dang, I love writing with this thing. I, I, I have filled this pen since last week when we were last together. That's how much I've been writing with it. Smooth, but with the right amount of feedback. Uh, I've only found one ink so far that doesn't like this pen, which was Platinum Classic Lavender Black, which is an awesome ink, just apparently not in this pen. So, of course, this pen writes beautifully with Aurora Black, but it better. I, I was looking at my comparison video where I compared that pen with the vintage Aurora 88, and I have to say the vintage one came off looking a little lackluster just in its physical appearance. I mean, it is a slim black pen, which is the aesthetic I like. Now, that said, they, this one performs beautifully, and once you have it in your hand, you're, you're in love. I'm in love. So we'll just write vintage. Uh, at the time, they actually had 17 different nibs. I do not know which nib this is. But there it is, semi-hooded, which I thought was a clever thing. And I have been told that somehow this is a code for what the nib is. But I've never found uh, what I would consider a reliable source to tell me the code. Uh, I have found websites that say that, but they can't say where they get their information from. And that's one of those pieces of information I feel like needs to be cited. Now, as you can tell, this pen is running low on ink. That's why it's railroading. Uh, I uh, may or may not fill it up again. Uh, I may give it a break so I can play with some other pens. But Fuji Musume. is the ink that's in this pen, which is a 
Japanese, I guess, for wisteria, which is a flower I think is really cool, but I'm heard, I've heard that they're, they spread like weeds, and maybe I don't want one, but I've always thought those arbors, or whatever they're called, where they're hanging down, would just look really cool. But, uh, yeah, so, nice pan. A interesting segmented ink window. Uh, the one I showed in my comparison video last week was my other one, which has a yellowish ink window. This one's more reddish. I don't know why that is, but, you know, that is what it is. I seem to have been on an Aurora kick lately. I'm going to show you an Aurora style in one of the gemstone finishes. I want to say this is rose gold. Definitely at a different price point than the original Aurora 80, or I'm sorry, than the modern Aurora 88. Uh, I would say this is about comparable in price to what I paid for the vintage Aurora 88. And this has a broad nib in it. So the Aurora style is a very nice pen. Uh, it may be a steel nib. It may have a slightly retroish appearance, but I, you know, I almost think that's a little bit of that Italian design aesthetic. Uh, the ink I have in it is KWZ Brownish Pink. Or is it just brown pink? Brown pink, I apologize. A little bit of feedback to the nib. It may not be quite as broad as your typical broad, but nevertheless, a very nice pen. And attractive. Usually I have to remember to pull this one out of my breast pocket, but uh, this time it, I, was, I was ready. Uh, my daily writer pen, the Lamy 2000. Uh, I, you know, I think back to the past when you might have only owned one pen. I think if I were to go that route, this would be it. Love that Aurora 88, love the vintage one. This pen is just so good. There's a reason it's always inked. Not my flashiest pen, not my best writer, not my most comfortable, but when you put the whole package together, I'd call this my best pen. I will come to the flexiest pen on the batch. This is one of those slim black vintage pens that I like, the Senator 140. One of the few where I actually know its model number, it's an issue I'm having, is I really want to film some reviews of my Senator pens, and I just can't find the information about them that I want. You know, I know it's model number, but I still am just not learning as much as I'd like to learn. Did this one have a nib size? I can't remember. So yes, I'm using the camera lens as a magnifying glass, because this lighting is okay for video, but it's not very good for me reading these details. No, I guess there's no nib size, so just a 585. All right, so Senator, and of course this has one of my favorite inks, Sailor Gentle Epinot, which is uh, French for Spanish. All right, geez, French for spinach. Wow, that was awkward. This pen sometimes becomes my daily writer over the summer, quite often actually. Uh, Pilot Custom 823. In the winter, what I'll do is something like this. I'll fill it up with just a fun ink. I've actually been using this to correct papers just lately. Uh, I need a, need a different color. I graded some papers and made them do them again, and then I have to regrade them in a different color. Uh, one thing you'll see, well, you can't see because you're on video. If you were sitting here with me, you'd think this is a scented ink, but no, it is not. It smells like, vaguely like vanilla, but off vanilla. And this just is a thing with, uh, I didn't mention it before, but this KWZ, which is a Polish brand, uh, is a thing with their inks. I'm guessing it's, an, it's a fungicide or something that's in the ink. I've never smelled another ink like it. Now, uh, not objectionable, it's just a thing I noticed. Uh, with the Sailor inks, those have a smell also that, uh, I think it's penol, but I'm, or phenol, I can't remember for sure. Uh, don't quote me on that. But uh, also a fungicide. Yeah, I don't have anything more intelligent to add to that. Last week, I gave you a closer look at this pen in comparison with its brother. This is a central pen, which is a Czechoslovak Czechoslovakian make. This isn't as flashy a pen. This has 
Just a very simple uh, steel nib, which I think the gold plating wore off. Nevertheless, an attractive pen and a good writer. Uh, good writer after I got it cleaned out, which was a little bit of a process. Uh, I don't know the nib size. I'm going to go with fine. This actually, other than it's not quite to my taste, this would actually be a good daily writer pen. I have this particular ink in it because it is a lubricating ink. Uh, probably the next ink I put in it will also be lubricating because there's a, we'll call it a captured converter, I guess, uh, which was very stiff. So I may eventually end up having to use silicone grease, I don't know, but uh, for now I just thought I'd try lubricating ink, see if that does the magic. Actually, maybe I could use that pen to do some correcting. Or, oh heck, the vintage, it, oh, except it's almost out of ink. Sadly, unless I refill it, I'm pretty sure you won't be seeing this pen next week. Uh, this is a pen, I did a review of it some time ago. It was one of my earlier reviews. It was when I was starting to make an attempt at doing decent reviews, but wasn't really there yet. I even showed an unboxing because I was just so shocked at what a huge box it pen came in well it's because it came with a toy car which if you remember my old set i actually still have that toy car sitting there and it's you know still there in my living room if you ever stop by um nice uh vintage pen it's a it's a brand that was revived uh, i think this company it, it's a man who's inspired to bring these back uh, I, I think he's done a good job capturing the look uh, he has a Wall Eversharp Deco Band, which I think is a very attractive pen, and interesting nib with very good flex writing. Now this is definitely at the other end of the price line, but yeah, it's, it's a good pen. Uh, one thing I don't like is this converter. Yes, that's a converter, a regular converter, and I have no way to look here at the ink level. Uh, cleaning this pen out, usually with converter pens, it's pretty easy just to put the uh, bulb syringe right here on the section and really flush the nib. Very hard to do with this pen. So, uh, yeah, I have some complaints, but doggone, you know, I have thought every time I purge and give pens away, I've thought, yeah, this one's got to go. And yet I keep it. And I've come to the conclusion it's kind of like that uh, Platinum 3776 Shoji. So disappointed when I first got it. And yet it seemed to be inked up at random times. And then uh, it just seemed like I couldn't get rid of it. And what do you know, now I own a whole bunch of Platinum 3776s. So I think this pen's like that. It just took some time to grow on me and uh, accept the writing experience despite the other faults of the pen. So I'd call this a sleeper hit. It's just one of those pens that takes a while to grow on you. The nib even has a little bit of flex to it. Whoops. And I just misspelled wall. And the ink in it uh, actually came mislabeled. This was labeled as Violet Number no. 2. I emailed the company and they said, Oh, <laughs> we'll get that new, bo the correct bottle to you right away. And they let me keep this one. Although it was quite a while, it took actually some help from a pen pile to figure out what ink I actually had. So I'm pretty sure it's menthol green, but you know, I'm open to being wrong. So those are the pens I have in use this week. Perhaps you have a sleeper hit. You know, a pen that uh, just kind of slept along in your collection until one day you realized, hey, I really like this pen. Kind of like my Wall Eversharp 50. So feel free to comment below. Uh, also subscribe below if uh, you are interested in videos like this. I forgot to put that after my credits. And uh, yeah, I'm going to close with uh, something that might make you glad you live where you do. I don't know. I, uh, we got sent home from school early today, which is maybe why I'm so boisterous tonight. I, uh, it, I'm filming this on a Wednesday. Uh, we had not lots of snow, 
but it was blowing so much that at times when I'd look out my window, I couldn't, my classroom window, because I was at work, I couldn't see the parking lot. And my classroom is right on the street, and the parking lot for the school is across the street. Couldn't see it. <laughs> so they sent us home. Uh, so I took this footage just, just standing in my front door and back door. Yes, I was lazy. I didn't really want to go out again, so... I uh, really don't want to go out again tomorrow morning because it's going to be very cold and the latest weather report said high of negative one tomorrow so I have to be at school early tomorrow so I can just imagine what it's going to be when I walk to work. Uh, I also am pretty sure the roads won't be plowed yet so that'll be a fun walk to work but hey I live in town I get to walk to work I do not have to shovel to get to work so that is an awesome perk of my life. Well, hello. I got home early from school today because of the snow. Not so much the amount of snow as the fact that it's blowing and visibility was really, really bad. I was talking to one bus driver uh, after he got back. He ended up, uh, didn't deliver some kids to their homes because with the snow blowing, he couldn't tell what was road and what was ditch. So he stopped at a local business and called the parents from there and said, You'll, you're going to have to come get your kid. <laughs> so that's pretty bad when a bus driver has to do that. Definitely one of those days I'm glad I walked to work. Uh, right now visibility isn't too bad. But all it's going to take is a little wind coming up again. You can see it's drifted in front of my front door since I've left for work this morning. So some shoveling to do, but I'm going to wait till the wind and the snow stop. Right now it's uh, about 7 degrees Fahrenheit outdoors. Uh, 58 degrees indoors uh, in the kitchen. I, I turn the heat down when I'm at work. Uh, this Now that I'm home, I'll turn it back up. And the kitchen is always cooler than the rest of the house because it's an addition on the back. So it's usually 2 to 4 degrees cooler than the house. But I'm going to do some cooking after I film pens in use so you uh, warm the kitchen up. So yeah, in the Dakotas, sometimes your biggest problem is actually blowing snow rather than the amount of snow. And I know people who live in areas where it just falls may not quite get that, but yeah. Uh, here in town, you can't quite see it. Sometimes conditions in town are different from out of town, where you have the open prairie to blow across. So through the back door, it's not that well exposed, but snow has come in around the screen door a bit. And there we go. Car is in the process of getting buried. And you can kind of see how the drifts work. I always think that's so cool, the way the snow will drift around an object like that. Maybe it's the physicist in me. And I know there were times this afternoon looking out through the classroom window, I could not see the parking lot. And I am right across the street from the parking lot, so I should be able to see it. So gives you some idea just see white <laughs> well good to be home I've got a few extra hours so I'm going to film an early episode of pens in use and hopefully get back to school tomorrow so anyway I thank you for watching uh, I hope you found that little excursion into my life interesting and we'll see you later bye bye